the hyoid bone, which we can see here, is a bone at the top of the larynx. The, the, the cartilages of the larynx and the connective tissues are all fixed together pretty much as one unit, which means that if you can move the hyoid bone, you can move the larynx. Um, and what we see in the anterior neck is we see a lot of what get called strap muscles, and these strap muscles attach to the hyoid bone. There are some, really, the strap muscles are infrahyoid, they're inferior to the hyoid bone. But let's have a look at the muscles uh, that are infrahyoid and suprahyoid and can either move the hyoid or can stabilise the hyoid or move other things if the hyoid itself is stabilised, if that makes sense. By the way, if you want to feel the larynx moving, do a swallow. So what we'll do is we'll look at each of these muscles and we'll identify each one. They're sensibly named, but there are two weird ones, which we'll take a little bit more thinking about. Um, and we'll think about their innovation. As we go around, you have a look at other structures that are nearby as we go, all right? So we'll look at, we'll just group them, we'll do the different things, right? Um, model. Tell you what, we'll do it backwards. We'll do the innovation first. Um, if, if it's a strap muscle, if it's a hyoid muscle and an infrahyoid muscle, so if it's a muscle attached into the hyoid bone that runs inferiorly to the hyoid, it's going to be innervated by um, a spinal nerve root from C1, C2 or C3 or multiple ones through. Ansar cervicalis is a little loop of nerves that we see in the neck. They'll be innervating those muscles. If it's suprahyoid, if it's superior to the hyoid bone, if it attaches to the tongue, it's going to be innervated by the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12. And the other ones will <laughs> either be innervated by the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5, or the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, or probably both. Um, the digastric's got two, but anyway. That's probably all you need to know. If you really want to know, go and have a look in a table in a, in a textbook. But our main aim then is to identify these muscles. First of all, if we were dissecting the neck, the first muscle there we'd come across would be platysma, which you can kind of see here. So we take away platysma, and then you can see this is sternocleidomastoid. This is not one of the strap muscles that we're talking about. Take away sternocleidomastoid, and we can see a bit better now these, this is what I'm talking about here, this deeper layer. And this layer, look, you can see on the other side, these strap muscles have been taken away. So these strap muscles are directly overlying the thyroid cartilage, the membranes of the larynx here, the cricoid cartilage, the, thigh, the thyroid gland, the trachea, these blood vessels, so internal jugular vein, uh, common carotid arteries in there, right? So that's where these muscles are. And I was asking an ENT buddy who loves this anatomy, why we've got so many strap muscles, he didn't know. So I think it's partly it's a functional thing, moving the hyoid and what have you, but also partly it's a structural thing. If we didn't have any muscles here, you wouldn't have any protection of these visceral structures anteriorly. All right, so what am I talking about with naming? All right, here's a muscle here. There's the hyoid bone up there. Now this muscle seems to be running from the hyoid bone to hmm, the sternum or the manubrium part of the sternum. I reckon this then must be sternohyoid. Seems like a sensible name, right? So if the sternum is fixed and you contract this muscle, then you pull the hyoid bone back down again. So if the, if the hyoid bone has been elevated, sternohyoid would pull it back down again, right? Sternohyoid. Good so far. Now, oh, if we go around here, there's a muscle in there. If I take away the internal jugular vein, look at this muscle. This muscle is running between the hyoid bone here and the thyroid cartilage here. I reckon we should call this muscle thyrohyoid. Seems like a good name. So that would be the thyrohyoid muscle. As I turned it around, can you see here's sternohyoid here. And look, there's actually a second muscle deep to it. 
So we've got these flat strap muscles overlying each other. If we were dissecting this in the cadaver, we could, we could separate this muscle and peel it back and we'd see this muscle better. But we can see enough. We can see that this deeper muscle is running from the sternum here up to the thyroid cartilage here. It's not going all the way up to the hyoid. It's only going as far as the thyroid. So we should call this sternothyroid, I think. That's three already. So if you recognize the structures the skeletal structures and cartilaginous structures of the neck, you can uh, name these muscles really easily. What about this one here? Mmm, this is a weird one. Where's that going? That's deep to sternocleidomastoid. This is actually one muscle here. This is the weird one, the weird infrahyoid one. This is omohyoid. Omos refers to the shoulder. And this is actually running from the scapula. So here's the clavicle. The scapula is the flat bone back there. That's running from the scapula. And then it changes direction deep to sternocleidomastoid. Underneath there, there's a fascial sling, right? So connective tissue that the muscle runs through and changes direction. So it's said to have two bellies. Um, so it runs from the shoulder, from the scapula, through that fascial sling, changes direction, and now it's running more vertically and then runs up to the hyoid. That's omohyoid. Here's another model, and here's sternocleidomastoid, a muscle that we can we take that off. There we go. If we take off trapezius, now we can see that there's omohyoid. There's the direction change. The connective tissue is not here, but there is a fascial sling tying this down and bump runs up there. That sling is actually tied down to the to the clavicle but there's more to it than that and it's always it's not it's not next to the clavicle it's away from the clavicle there. But that's the idea. There's the clavicle. This is the scapula here. All right. So those are the four infrahyoid muscles. The, they're the ones that are really the strap muscles. And you can see that they'll all depress the hyoid bone or stabilize the hyoid against other movements. Now to see the suprahyoid muscles, this is going to be harder because they're up in there. Let's, whoo, let's do something. So this is a little bit tricky because of the position here, but there are four suprahyoid muscles. What can we see? Huh, what can we see? Well, the floor of the oral cavity here really is formed by mylohyoid. There's a mylohyoid muscle that's running from the mandible back to the hyoid bone, meeting in the middle. And this is then a muscular floor, so it's very mobile. So the mylohyoid muscle um, can contract. It can change the base of the floor of the mouth. So it can pull the hyoid anteriorly or both of these muscles can lift it back up again if it's been depressed. But also you can change the shape of the floor of your mouth here. You can, you know, when you're swallowing and chewing and eating and it moves around a little bit, right? Here's the hyoid bone here and here's the mandible. Now, the, we have a muscle running from the chin, the geniohyoid. Genio refers to chin, we see a genioglossus muscle as well, but I'm saying too much. The geniohyoid muscle runs from the chin back to the hyoid bone, which means that that could pull the hyoid bone anteriorly. Um, so we've got those two. And then right next to it, we can see this here. We can see another sling. And next to it, another muscle. Hmm. So the mylohyoid and geniohyoid muscles are overlapping each other and forming the floor here. This muscle, this is digastric, and we can see that because there's another sling there. So this muscle runs to the hyoid, runs through a connective tissue sling, and then runs back out to the, the mastoid process beside the ear. The mastoid process is part of the temporal bone. It's called digastric because it's got these two muscle bellies. Gaster, stomach, belly, die, two. So it's got these two bellies. Um, so it's attaching to the hyoid bone. And in fact, so the anterior part of the digastric muscle, the anterior belly is innervated by 
the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, but the posterior belly is innervated by the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, for some good embryological reasons. Um, so this muscle then can pull on the mandible through this sling from this point here, which means you, you could use it to depress the mandible against resistance, right? So the idea is that we normally, gravity just lets your mandible open, but you can open your mandible against resistance and the digastric muscle is, is, is contributing to that. But if you do it, you can feel actually that all of these muscles are getting involved in that. All of these muscles are, so they're just like with any movement, right? When you make a fist, there are lots of muscles getting involved to let you make that fist, antagonistic and agonistic and so on. What we're seeing here is that when you pull the mandible down against resistance, these guys will pull in the hyoid bone down, other muscles are stabilizing the hyoid, that's pulling, do you see what I mean? So, when we talk about an action of these muscles, you've got to remember that the muscle anchors here, anchors here, goes through this sling, if a muscle gets shorter, what happens? So it, the digastric is described as helping um, depress the mandible and also stabilize the hyoid bone when you're trying to move the hyoid bone in different ways or move muscles from the hyoid bone. So if that's the posterior belly back there, right next to it we can see another muscle and if you know your skull anatomy you'll remember that there's the mastoid process so the digastric muscle is attaching to the mastoid process, there's a little groove in there for it Here's the styloid process right next to it. And there's a muscle running from the styloid process to the hyoid bone, so right next to the posterior belly of digastric. The muscle that runs from the styloid process to the hyoid bone is called stylohyoid. So that's it, stylohyoid, um, geniohyoid, Mylohyoid, kind of sensibly named, digastric is the weird one. The digastric muscle is the weird muscle of the, superior, of the suprahyoid set. The stylohyoid muscle is also innervated by the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. But that's it. Those are the strap muscles of the neck. Um, really, when we say strap muscles, we're usually thinking about these muscles, infrahyoid, um, but since we're talking about the muscles of the hyoid bone, I thought we should talk about all of them. And the main aim here was to be able to identify these infrahyoid and suprahyoid muscles. They can be a little bit tricky to remember, but identification I think is easier because you identify the muscle and you can name it based upon its attachment sites. And when we think about our muscles attachment sites, we then think about if that muscle gets shorter when it contracts, then those two points can be drawn closer together, so what movement could it cause? But also remember that many of these muscles are working together, working in opposition to stabilize the hyoid bone, about which other things can occur. And when we talk about the hyoid bone, we're talking about swallowing, the larynx moves up and down during the swallow, and we may be thinking about speech because of the role of the tongue in the base of the floor of the mouth and that sort of thing, okay? Strap muscles of the neck. See you next week.